In this example, we're going to talk about the second law analysis of a steam turbine. As we can see in the problem statement here, we have a steam turbine with a, a given pressure and flow rate and temperature at the inlet and a given pressure and temperature at the outlet. We're uh, losing heat to the environment at a given pressure and temperature, and they give us the heat rate loss of 300 kilowatts. It tells us to neglect potential and connect kinetic energy changes and we want to determine a few things about this process determining the actual power output maximum possible power output second law efficiency exergy destroyed and the exergy of the steam at the inlet conditions so to go through this go ahead and draw a diagram that usually helps us to we can keep track of all our, our known conditions so here we've got a few things that we know we know the steam pressure and temperature coming into the turbine, we know the heat loss rate, we don't know the work, but we know it's a turbine so it's producing work, we know the ambient conditions, and the exiting conditions. We can write down our assumptions here. Uh, we know that this is a steady state process, we don't talk about anything about transient processes, so we're going to assume that the, the uh, change in mass and the control volume is, is, is constant, that the change in energy of the control volume is constant, and the change in exergy of the control volume is constant. We're also neglecting potential and kinetic energies. Alright, so for the analysis of this system, we can take the turbine as our system. Uh, we draw the control volume around the turbine, use that as, our, as the boundary for our control volume. There's only one inlet and one outlet, so we know that the mass must be conserved, which is why we have m.1 equal to m.2 and the heat lost to the surrounding heat is lost to the surrounding air and work is done by the system so those are the things that we we know are happening um, we can find the inlet outlet and the dead state conditions of the steam um, easily those are those are all given uh, we just go to, to the tables find those values right there and the rest of this is pretty straightforward. To determine the, uh, the usually a good first place to start is to uh, is to determine is to use the first law and see see how far that can get you. So if we want to find the the power output of the turbine, we know everything we need to know about that. We know the heat rate loss of the turbine. We know we don't know the work. Um, this is a steady state process, so these two terms U1 and U2 can go away. Um, and we know enough to determine the inlet and outlet enthalpy and then we know the mass flow rate. So that makes this a pretty simple problem. Um, we can rearrange the equation like we have right here and go ahead and write it out and solve for our, our work term and that gives us a 4306 kilowatts of work produced by this turbine. The maximum power output is the reversible power, it should be say reversible power, is determined from the rate form of the exergy balance applied on the extended system, which is the system plus the immediate surroundings. The boundary for the for the extended system is the environment, basically, so that is the T0 and P0. And since we know that this is a reversible process, <coughs> we can get rid of this destroyed term. The difference between <coughs> the entropy and energy balances and exergy balances is that the exergy balance has a has a destroyed exergy destroyed term. So exergy is capable of being destroyed in the system, which is basically the work potential of uh, the system is is being destroyed. We know that the change in exergy of the system over time is zero there's no exergy destroyed so that leads us to the exergy in must equal exergy out exergy in is just our mass flow rate times our stream exergy exergy out is our work potential so that's the wor reversible work plus the exergy that happens due to heat transfer plus our stream exergy so we can reduce this even further since there are no irreversibilities, since this is a reversible process, that includes heat transfer. Heat transfer can go away, so we can get rid of our heat transfer term, which leaves us with the simplified equation. Reversible work equals the mass flow rate times the stream exergy in minus the mass flow rate times the stream exergy out. 
simplification of that equation there, we can uh, we can eliminate the kinetic and potential energy terms and gives us the following equation. Substituting those in, we can determine the reversible work produced by this system. So that's the most so that we, that gives us 5072 kilowatts. So that's the most work we could ever expect this system to produce. So if we want to go a step further and determine the second law efficiency of the turbine, that's just the ratio of the actual work out over the reversible work. 4306 over 5072 gives us about 84.9%. So what we're saying is that 15% of 15.1% of the work is wasted during this process. That could be um, could be just internal losses through the turbine or or friction, but those are lo those are things that are lost that are that's wor work potential that's not converted to actual work. The difference between the reversible work and the actual useful work is the extrajudy destroyed. So what we have here is the extrajudy destroyed is our reversible work minus our actual work. 5072 minus 4306 is a 776. So 776 kilowatts of work potential was destroyed during this process. You could also determine this by determining the um, the exergy gener or the excuse me the entropy generated during this process. So that that would be accomplished by using your entropy balance equation and setting it equal to the entropy generated term which would uh, allow you to determine that exergy destroyed during the process. So part E, the maximum work potential of the stream, steam at the inlet is just a simple stream, is this the simple stream exergy? So if you look at this, this is the stream exergy equation on a per mass basis. So we know all these values. We can just go ahead and solve for those. That gives us 1238 kilojoules per kilogram of work potential for every kilogram of, uh, of steam that flows through this turbine. So we're, what we're not saying is that we're neglecting kinetic and potential energy, but that's what we're doing. We don't have any kinetic or potential energy terms here, so those are those are gone. So not counting kinetic and potential energy, every kilogram of steam entering the turbine has a work potential of 1,238 kilojoules per kilogram. So if we if we um, account for the total mass flow rate, which we know, we can determine the 900 excuse me 9,904 kilowatts is the maximum possible work that would ever occur from this turbine. That would be if the the inlet conditions were to allowed to go completely to dead state and convert everything to work. Obviously that's not going to happen. The turbine work the turbine is converting about 43.5 percent of the available work to steam steam output to um, to work output. The key takeaway from this is that exergy balance that when you have an exergy balance you have to include this exergy destroyed term when you're trying to determine the maximum reversible work, you throw away the destroyed term because there will be no exergy destroyed in a reversible process. A second law efficiency is just your actual work over your reversible work, and that you can use stream exergy to determine the maximum possible work that would that could ever happen if the system were allowed to produce work down to dead state.